Okay, so today we're going to talk about double angle identities. This is actually really weird because I'm sitting here in front of an empty class. And so I'm just pretending you're here. Andy, wake up. And Andrew Sinclair, negative zero doesn't exist. And so what a double angle means is it's got this little two tucked in between here, double meaning times two. So this is what tells you you're dealing with a double angle. Couple new formulas we're going to add to your formula card. First one is called sine 2x, and sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x times cos x. Okay. Sine 2x equals 2 sine x cos x. And you don't need to know where that comes from, but I'm just going to show you because I like to tell you that stuff. So where it comes from is taking our sum and difference formula and just replacing the beta for alpha. So what I'm doing is doing two alphas. And so we know from last class that this is going to be sine alpha times cos alpha plus sine alpha times cos alpha. And if I'm collecting like terms, I have one cos alpha and a second, or sorry, one sine cos and a second sine cos. So I have two sine alpha cos alpha. Okay, so it just comes right from the sum and difference formula. I would jot that down on my index card, but it's completely up to you. We're going to do the same thing with the cos alpha plus beta formula. So again, just replacing beta with alpha. And I wrote sine instead of cos. And so from last, cos, last class, this is cos alpha, cos alpha minus sine alpha, sine alpha. And simplifying, cos times cos is cos squared. So I get a cos squared alpha. And a sine times sine is sine squared alpha. And so the formula for sine 2x, sorry, cos 2x, is cos 2 alpha minus sine squared alpha. Okay, I would pause the video, add that to your uh, index card as well. But wait, there's a second formula. All I'm going to do is use our identity that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, and I'm going to take the sine squared, and I'm just going to replace it. So we know that sine squared theta is 1 minus cos squared theta, so that means that sine squared alpha is 1 minus cos squared alpha. Okay, so just using that identity from before. And now I'm just going to simplify by distributing that negative. So negative times 1 is negative 1. Negative times negative is positive cos squared alpha. And collecting like terms, I've got 2 cos squared alpha minus 1. That becomes formula number 2. Again, if you want to, pause the video, add that to your cue cards. But wait, of course, there's a third formula. I'm going to do exactly what we did up here, except this time I'm going to replace the cos squared. So going back to our first formula, which was cos squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. This time I'm going to take the, the cos squared out and replace it with 1 minus sine squared alpha. And just collecting the like terms, I've got 1 minus 2 squared alpha. And that's our third formula. Again, pause the video, add that to your cue card. So just to summarize, we now have four new formulas. The first one is the only one for sine 2x or sine 2 alpha or sine 2 theta. It's sine 2x equals 2 sine x cos x. For cos 2x, we have three different formulas. The first one is cos squared minus cos squared. I just realized these should be x's, sorry, because it's x on the other side. I got too excited. Pause again, change your cue card. So you might be wondering, how do you know which of these three equations to use? It'll all come from what's given in the question. So as we go through examples, I'll show you how you know which one to pick. Okay, if you don't, oh, we gotta do tan. Again, I can show you the proof with the alpha minus beta. I'm just gonna skip it this time, straight up memorization or looking at your formula sheet. Tan 2x is 2 tan x divided by 1 minus tan squared x. 
tan 2x equals 2 tan x divided by 1 minus tan squared x. Okay, so on your formula card or if you're using the formula sheet, you should see one formula for sine 2x, three formulas for cos 2x, one formula for tan 2x. Okay, so let's do some examples. You might want to pause if you didn't grab paper, which you probably didn't, just saying. Okay, example number one, they're telling us the angle is in quadrant three, and they're giving us that sine theta is negative one-third. And they want two different things. The first is sine two theta, and then tan two theta. Okay, so you notice this is very similar to what we did before with the uh, reciprocal functions. It's also similar to the alpha plus beta. So I'm going to start with the formula. The only one formula we have for sine two theta is two sine theta cos theta. I have sine theta. What I'm missing is cos theta. And so just using what we did in the first unit, I know that this is O and this is H. And what that means is I need the adjacent side. Okay, so either on scrap paper or just off to the side or in your head, you don't need to show the work for this calculation, but if you want to, you can. So I know that negative one squared plus the adjacent squared equals three squared. So that's one plus A squared equals nine. So A squared equals eight. So I know that the adjacent is plus or minus root of eight. If you want to simplify that into two root two, you can, but again, we've talked before, you don't have to. Now I just need to know which one I'm using plus or minus, and that comes from the quadrant. Cos in quadrant three is negative, so the adjacent is negative root eight, or two root two, whatever you prefer, over three. Okay, so subbing in, I'm keeping that two, it's just a coefficient. I'm in putting in my negative third for cos, and I'm putting in my negative root eight over three for cos. And so top times top times top, bottom times bottom times bottom. The top gives me two root eight, and the bottom gives me nine. Again, if you want to simplify this radical, you can, but you won't have to on the final exam. That's final answer, that's the value of the double angle of sine theta. BS for tan two theta. So I'm gonna use two tan x divided by one minus tan squared x. To get tan, I'm just using my sine and cos above. It's quadrant three, so it's gonna be positive. It's the opposite side over the adjacent side. Again, if you wanna simplify, if you wanna rationalize, that's fine, you just aren't required to. And so subbing in, I have two times one over root eight and on the bottom, one minus one over root eight squared. Multiplying the top first, I get two over root eight. On the bottom, I'm gonna do the squared first, so I'm gonna leave that one minus. One squared is one, root eight squared is eight. On the bottom, I've gotta combine these fractions, so I'm gonna turn the one into eight over eight to get common denominator. So on the bottom, I have eight over eight minus one over eight equals seven over eight. Last step, I'm just gonna divide the fraction. So I have one over root, or sorry, two over root eight, taking the bottom fraction and taking the reciprocal. End up with 16 over seven root eight. Again, if you wanna rationalize, great. If you wanna simplify, great. You just aren't required to do it. There's example one. Example two is just using these formulas to prove an identity. So we've got one plus sine two theta is equal to sine theta plus cos theta all squared. And so pick a side, it doesn't matter. Probably you're gonna go to the right side because there's more stuff going on. This is a binomial squared, so we're gonna need to foil it. So I'm just gonna write the binomial out twice Sometimes visual people, if you see it twice, you remember to FOIL. Okay, that step's not required, it's just if you need it, write it. And so multiplying sine times sine is sine squared. Sine times cos is sine cos. Cos times sine is cosine. And cos times cos is cos squared. 
Simplifying up, I'm going to put these two terms together. Remember, the order doesn't matter when you're multiplying. So a 3 times 4 is the same as a 4 times 3. So that gives me 2 sine theta cos theta. Or I could have written it as 2 cos theta sine theta, so the order of the sine and cos don't matter. And all I'm going to do is put these two terms at the front, because hopefully you'll see something. And Andrew can shout out right now, yay, what do we see? Sine squared plus cos squared we know equals 1. And then straight from our formula card, we know that 2 sine theta cos theta is the same as sine 2 theta. And there it is, happy dance, QED. Okay, let's do another identity. Cosecant cosy 2 theta plus 1 is sine theta plus cos theta squared over sine 2 theta. Again, picking a side, I'm going to pick right because it's more complicated, plus we haven't talked about cosecant 2 theta yet, so let's just leave it. I already know what sine squared plus cos squared is from above, so I'm just going to grab the simplified, which was right up here, okay, rather than doing the work again. So I know the top is going to simplify down to 1 plus sine theta cos theta. And on the bottom, I'm going to put in the other side of that identity, which is 2 sine theta cos theta. Again, I've said this before, your brain is going to want to cancel. This is puppy killing. And Mr. Product's probably looking at us like we're crazy. Puppy killing in this one. You can't cancel half a binomial. Okay, so there's nothing else I can do here. If we go through our steps, change the sine and cos, I've done. Factor, nothing is squared, so I can't do that. Combining fractions, I've done. I don't want to start doing conjugate binomial until I've worked on the other side, so there's nothing more I can do on this side. So I'm going to flip to the other side. All I'm going to do is use the reciprocal identity. So if sine theta is 1 over cosecant theta, means cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta, and so cosecant double angle theta, so 2 times theta, is just 1 over sine 2 theta. And then that plus 1 is just going to tag on to the end. Okay, so these reciprocal identities, it doesn't matter if there's just theta or 2 theta or squareds, we know they keep, they keep the same. Now I'm going to use that identity from the other side that says sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. I need a common denominator, so I'm going to make the second fraction into 2 sine theta cos theta over itself. Keeping the common denominator, smushing the top together, and there's my QED. So although this started out kind of nasty and lots of stuff going on, these are usually some of the simpler identities to solve because once you use the 2 sine theta formula, it tends to simplify. Just like we saw yesterday with the sum and difference formulas, we can use these to solve equations. So we're kind of back to unit 1 now. We need to put that equation idea back into our head. Okay, the minute your brain sees this, either a sine, cos, or tan, 2 theta, this is where you're pulling out your double angle identities. Now, there's three formulas for this guy, so we need to be a little careful what we choose. I probably don't want to pick the first one, which is cos squared minus sine squared, because I don't have any other coses. I probably don't want to pick the second one, 2 cos squared x minus 1, because I don't have any other coses. So you'll know which formula to pick just by what else is in the equation. What I want to do is I want to get all of this into sine. So I'm going to use the third formula that says cos 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Okay, this now becomes just an equation from unit 1. It's got a squared, so most likely we're going to need to factor. So I'm going to take everything over to the right-hand side. So that's going to give me 2 sine squared theta minus 2x, and the ones there are going to cancel. This is just a common factor question, so I'm going to pull a sine out front. And that leaves me 2 sine x. My, ooh, I lied. I'm going to pull a 2 out. I missed the common factor there. And so that's going to leave me with sine x minus 1. Split and solve. So 2 sine x equals 0. Sine x minus 1 equals 0. 
dividing by 2 on the left-hand side. That's an axis question, and it's asking where is the y value 0. So we know that x has to equal 0, pi, and 2 pi. Here, sine x equals 1, also an axis value, where is the y value 1 is the top of the circle. And we just check the interval. They're all good values, so just putting them in numerical order, we get 0, pi on 2, pi, and 2 pi.